across this place can we open our hearts and just surrender to the king today God you're worthy we worship you we surrender everything to you God because we know that it, when it's in your hands it's going to be all right we praise you Jesus you're worthy you're great we love you and we praise you hallelujah amen thank you for being a part of our service today our pastor's coming to preach. Let's worship with him as he, as he preaches today. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. We're glad that you're with us. Appreciate the presence of God. You know, we serve such a mighty God. And his will is being done all around us. We just need to make sure that we're keeping our focus on him and asking him, Where do you, what do you want me to do today, God? You lead on, and whatever you have for me, I'm, I'm ready. And I know that God's going to keep us. He's going to lead us. He's going to help us. Amen. Glad to have everybody in the house of the Lord. If you're joining us on the Internet today, welcome. We're glad that you're with us. And we just want the Lord to minister to you. God's put a word on my heart. If you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18 and verse number 4. Acts 18 and verse 4. This is the Apostle Paul. He's in Corinth. And the Bible says, He reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to them, to the Jews, that Jesus was the Christ. 
And when they opposed themselves and blaspheming, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And Paul continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Paul was doing his best to start a church in Corinth, and the Bible says he was just opposed. In fact, people just directly rejected God's word and that Jesus was Christ. Paul got frustrated. Anybody ever feel frustrated? Because things aren't going like they should. You know, I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm doing the best I can, and yet it's not working out. But the Bible says that Paul was pressed in the spirit because God doesn't want you to stop. I want to preach to us this morning, pressed, but still marching on. Pressed, but still marching on. Let's ask the Lord just to enlighten our minds to his word today, give us revelation, and help us to mix the word with faith so it would profit us today. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, and we ask God that you would just move and minister And then as your word goes forth today, it would go forth with liberty and with freedom, and it would be received with an open mind and an open spirit. We ask, Lord Jesus, that every heart would receive what you have for them today. And when we come against any powers of the enemy that would try to hinder, we bind them in Jesus' name. And, Lord, you have your perfect work in this place. Lighten our minds with your word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Wave at somebody across the aisle. And you can be seated in Jesus' name. It's great to have a couple of our young people we haven't had for a while that ride our church vans. We're glad they're in the house of the Lord with us. It's good to see everybody today in the house of the Lord. Now, spiritual opposition is a real thing. We are in a spiritual war. And that opposition can make you feel very drained. Because this war can take a toll on us if we don't keep our focus in the right place. And even if we have our focus where it needs to be, it gets difficult sometimes. The oppression of the enemy tries to get us to quit because the devil knows the only way that he can really get a child of God is to get them to just stop, to give up, and to turn around on God. Because as long as they're determined, God's going to give them the strength. As long as they're willing, God's going to lead them. As long as they they keep their focus on the Lord, there's nothing that's going to stop them. This is a seasoned veteran of the gospel of the Apostle Paul. He was one of the greatest missionaries that the church, that the world has ever known. And he was trying to start a church here in Corinth. And he met opposition. And it was frustrating. And he didn't like it. In fact, he got mad, the Bible said, and he shook his raiment at them, and he said, it's on you now. I've done my best. I'm going to turn my attention to the Gentiles. Because Paul knew that the gospel first was going to go to the Jews, and then it was going to go to the rest of the world. And so when he got in a city, he went to their synagogues. He went to where they were, where they worshiped, and he tried to help them to understand more clearly what God had for them. And it was enemy territory, and it was hard. And the spiritual opposition that he had here caused him to get frustrated. Frustrated. You know, as I was studying this, that word frustration just kept popping up in my mind. And I guess because that word frustration pops up in our life all the time, doesn't it? Frustrated. Paul discussed it in his writings. This is Acts, and this is... This is writing about what happened to Paul in Acts 18, but Paul wrote about it in his own hand in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8. 
This is how Paul described some of the struggles and the battles that he went through when he was in Asia. He said, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. What? A Christian has trouble? Paul is just transparent. I mean, Paul was shipwrecked. He was beaten three times. He was in prison several times. He went through a lot of trouble that none of us ever thought about today. You know, the things that we're going through are tough for us, but my friend, as you grow in God, sometimes the trials get a little tougher. And so Paul went through all this, so he wrote back to the church of Corinth, and he said, I, I, I don't want you to think, because what the devil wants to do is lie to you and say, the only, you're the only one that's ex- experienced this, and you're the only one that's been through this, and you're the only one that's struggling like this. And so you might as well just turn around and give up because if you weren't walking with God, this wouldn't be happening for you. I didn't get too many amens, but it's true. It's, he's a specialist of telling us that the reason that you have trouble is because you're walking with God. So Paul said, brethren, I, I don't want you to be ignorant of the trouble which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of our life. Sounds like depression, doesn't it? Sounds like Paul was oppressed, and he might have even been depressed for a while. He said we were pressed out of measure. The spiritual pressure, the mental pressure was so tough that we even despaired for our own lives. We don't, hear, we don't talk about this very much, but we should because the Bible addresses it. Because when you walk with God, there, there are times where you go through deep valleys and there are times when you don't know what's right and what's wrong. And all you can do is just try to keep your focus on God and do the things that you know to do. And we walk many times by faith, not by sight. We don't see what's going on around us. And we can't see very far because of all the trouble that's around us. But we know that he's there. And we're like Job and we cry out and say, God, I look to the right and I look to the left and I couldn't find it. I look behind me. I looked in in front of me I couldn't find it but I know one thing God you know where I am I can't see you right now but you know where I am and so I'm going to hold on in the midst of the trouble and the trial he said we were pressed out of above out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life Verse 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Can we be real today? All right, the, th- the thoughts that go through our heads sometimes and the struggles that we're in as Christians is exactly what Paul is describing here. He said, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God that raised us, that raised the dead. Paul said, if, if I would have just kept focusing on myself and my own abilities and my own trouble and my own struggles, he said, I would have, I would have self-destructed. I, I would have, it would have been it. He said, but I had, to, I had to keep my focus and attention on God, understanding that it's only through God's strength. It's only through God's ability. It's only by the Spirit of God that we can go another step. It's only by the grace of God that I get another breath right now. And we take it so for granted that our heart just keeps beating. But if God stops your heart, my friend, you're done. Amen. You don't have any, any other life going forward. That's it. And so it's only by the grace and the mercy of God, my friend, that we're here and we We've got to keep that in our focus. And Paul said, I was so low. I was at such a point in my life that the sentence of death was in myself. And if I would have kept looking to myself to try to get out of it, my friend, I would have died right then. But he said, I looked to God. Because I know God even raises the dead. And so I might have been hopeless. I might have been, I might have been at such a bad point in my life that I didn't know how it was all going to work out. But God is my Savior. And God is my strength. And God is my refuge. He's my help. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The enemy says... 
Just get away from the church. Get away from God. Get out there and do stuff. The only reason you're going through this is because you're trying to walk with God. And he's lying to you, my friend, because if you trust in yourself, if you trust in this world system, you're not going to get better. You're going to get worse. Oh, there might be a little pleasure of sin for a season, but that season's not very long. And then you'll find yourself in the pig pen. You'll find yourself alone. You'll find yourself wanting and nobody around to help you. And so wake up right now and don't go any further down that road but turn around and come back to God get back in the church amen give yourself holy to God because God alone is your strength and God alone is your help the struggle is real my friend the battle is hard but you can make it Timothy and Saul, um, Timothy and Silas came to help Paul. Amen. But Paul, the Bible said, was pressed in the spirit. He was struggling to try to help the Jews understand in their synagogues. And he got reinforcements. But yet, God said, don't stop now. Don't quit now. And so he pressed. And he, he told them that Jesus was the Christ. And they outright rejected it. They rebelled against it. They said, no way. And so Paul got so frustrated, he shook his coat. And he said, your blood be upon you. I'm going to the Gentiles. And he left. The battle is real. But God has a call on your life. You have a divine purpose to fulfill in these last days. So please don't be afraid to speak the life-giving words of truth. Paul said, that's it. It's over. We've got to declare the truth, even when we don't feel like it, even when it's hard and we're going through our own personal issues. We've got to declare the truth of the Word of God. Peter puts it like this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do so. Let him do it as of the ability which God giveth him that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He said, if you, you try something in the kingdom, do it to the best of your ability. You do it understanding that you are a vessel, an ambassador of God. Amen. That God is empowering you and God is helping you. And God's depending on you to do the work that he's called you to do. And so don't give up, don't quit, but keep going on. And I feel this morning that someone needs to receive this into their own spirit and mix it with some faith inside because the devil tells them, well, you know what? What you thought was there and what you thought God called you, you might as well just give up. You might as well quit. But I'm telling you, the call of God and the elections of God are sure. Amen. The call of God is without repentance. Amen. It doesn't matter if you walk away from it. It's still there. God still has a call on your life, and he still wants you to do. And so get in there. Give yourself to God. Humble yourself before him. And let God. God use you in a mighty way. The opposition will come as you are used by God. The devil doesn't want you to become what God has called you to be, and so he'll do whatever he can to throw roadblocks in front of you. Isn't it amazing if you just read a little further in Scripture how the Scripture helps you? We talked about doing what God wants you to do in verse 11, and then you go to verse 12. And he immediately says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though strange, some strange thing has happened unto you. He's just talking about being used by God, being an oracle of God, amen, ministering under the ability that God has given you so that God can receive the glory. And then he said, now, just a second, I've got to help you here, church. I've got to help you, saints. I've got to help you, Christians, because you're going to have opposition if you do that. And so don't let anybody tell you it's strange. This is weird. You're the only one that's going through this struggle like this. He said, it's not strange. Amen. It's part of the process. As you are used by God and as the devil tries to stop you, you've got to keep your focus on the Lord and keep going forward. Forward. He said, but what we're supposed to do is verse 13, rejoice. That's usually not what we do, is it? Brother Wireball, can you believe how much I'm struggling right now? 
how hard this is. I mean, I've tried, and I've done my best, and I'm here, and I'm there, and it just seems like now this is happening, this is falling apart, this is the, and I can't get ahead. And that's not what Peter said to do. We're supposed to cast our cares where? On the Lord. Take them to God. We're to confess our faults to one another, but we don't need to complain to one another all the time. It's not wrong to go to someone and talk to them. I'm not saying that at all, so please, amen, don't, don't misread me. But I'm saying, Peter told them, if you've got a trial that's there, if there's a fiery trial that's happened, if it's hard, you don't know how you're going to make it, you're to rejoice, amen, you're to be happy, amen, you're to celebrate because God is your God, and God is your deliverer, and God is your strength, amen, and you're to be happy because you're you're part of the sufferings of Christ and you're going through some situations and it's just like a stamp of approval on your life that says, hey, you're on the right path. I mean, you're doing the right thing because the devil wouldn't mess with you if you weren't a threat to his kingdom. You know, I, I know in our past wars in our country, and I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, but in World War I and World War II, I don't remember... Maybe you can help me, some of you veterans. I don't remember that we sent any troops to Australia during that time, did we? We said, well, there's a couple people in Australia, and they might be opposed to us, and so we better send some planes that way. No, we didn't do that. We had troops where? Where they were needed, where the enemy was, where the opposition was that needed to be defeated. You know, the devil doesn't send his angels because he doesn't have nearly as many angels. He has half the angels that the Lord has. Remember, a third of the angels went with the devil, Lucifer, and the other two-thirds are still in heaven. And so they're out number two to one already. So why would they waste time on somebody that's not a threat to their kingdom? Peter said, rejoice in so much that you're partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory is revealed, shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Why did Peter tell the church this? He said, because I don't want anybody or anything to stop you from doing what God has put in your heart to do. If there's a call in your life, it's going to be fulfilled. You're going to have struggles. There's going to be opposition. You're going to have trouble. You're even going to have some issues with yourself and surrendering and going forward. But God wants that call to be fulfilled. So don't stop. Rejoice because the enemy comes along and he tries to sidetrack you, to discourage you, amen, to get you to quit and stop. But if you keep going on, you're going to have victory. God's going to get glory. And the kingdom of God is going to be multiplied because you made yourself a vessel that's available to the kingdom so he said you're going to have exceeding joy at the end so we need to be like Jesus remember the Bible says we need to look unto Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross that's what our real goal is, to be like the Lord. And so the Lord looked past the cross, and he looked all the way down into 2020, where there are people that were worshiping and serving him, amen, coming into his presence. And he said, you know what? I'm still going to the cross, and I'm going to suffer all this because I see what's ahead. And we need, to, we need to get our eyes and look at what's ahead because we're going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. It's not about the struggle of the moment that's important. It's about where we're going and what's going to happen in the future. And we want to take as many people with us. And so we're going to make ourselves available to God as we go forward. So don't be afraid to declare the word of God in this hour. I know there's a lot of stuff in the world going on around us, and we can get distracted by all that stuff. We can be discouraged by what's happening all around us, but God is in control, and God is taking care of our country. He's taking care of this world, and he's going to take care of this church and this, this community and this state. God is in control, and so we've just got to continue to go forward and to open our mouth and declare the word of God because God has called us to speak, to speak life into this world. Amen. Not death, but life. And so we need to continue to plant the seed everywhere. I was thinking of the New Testament church. It was primarily focused around Jerusalem at first and in Israel. But when persecution came, the Christians were spread. And after 70 A.D., they were spread all over the world. And little pockets of that Holy Ghost fire were everywhere. 
It's like when there's a big, a big fire going on and you take something, you hit it, and then it spreads and it starts fire over there and fire over there and fire over there. Amen. Well, the enemy came along and tried to put out what was going on, and they destroyed the temple, and they did all the things they could, amen, to stop what was happening there in, in, in Jerusalem and with the Jewish worship and the church that was going on. And it just spread everywhere, my friend, and it's gone around the world, and it's going to continue to go. And so when the devil comes and he tries to do something, amen, when a situation comes, amen, he tries to interfere, I mean, it's been an unusual year, and we hadn't been to be able to come together at church like we are, I mean, what, what we're used to, and all these kind of things. But you know what's happened? I mean, the devil lo- looked at it and said, you know what, if we can just shut the church up. But what has really happened is, I mean, the church has expanded, and we put our stuff on the internet more than ever, and the word of God's going more places than it's ever gone. I mean, and what's going to happen is, you just plant it here, and it's going to come up, and it's planted over there, and it's going to come up. I Amen. And everywhere, there's going to be fruit for what's happening right now in the midst of the struggle in the midst of the struggle Paul says it like this in Galatians 6 and 9 and let us be not weary in well doing because friends we can get tired and we can say it's I don't know pastor I I don't think it's worth it I don't know. And Paul said, church, saints, keep doing what you know is right. Keep doing what you know is right. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. When you walk with God, you'll have struggles. When you're doing the right thing, you'll experience opposition. When you're being effective for God, that's when the enemy comes in like a flood. But aren't you glad the Spirit of God raises up a standard against it? Hold on, because the power of God is being seen in your life. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, Paul said, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God may be, a, may be of God and not of us. He said, God puts his treasure in our, our earth and our bodies, and he puts his spirit inside of us because he doesn't want us to get too puffed up about who we are. We're really just clay pots. When you die and they bury you, your body's going to go back to the dust. It doesn't matter how many weights you've lifted, and I'm thankful you don't have to lift weights to get to heaven. I'm not opposing the lifting weights, but it's awful painful the next day or two after you lift weights. Sit-ups, oh, we were, um, my sister was here this week, and we went over to Cook Station Park and played disc golf on, on um, Thursday morning. Beautiful week God's given us this week, and they put new things at the park, and you walk around the trail now, and you can do your different exercises. And one of them was an incline sit-up bench. But, I mean, it's, I, mean I, can, I don't like sit-ups when I'm laying flat. But this one, your head is way below your feet. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is just an earthen vessel. It's going back to the dust. We're not going to die ahead of time because of those exercises. Um, I'll do different type of exercises. I want to stay as fit as I can, but not that, at least not now. I've got to work up to that. It's just a clay pot. So don't get so focused on your personality, your, attend, your, your physical appearance, all those kind of things. Do the best to take care of yourself. I'm not saying that. Don't ignore your health. But remember, It's about God and the power of God residing in us. Paul goes on, verse 8. I'm glad Paul is so transparent to help us in his writings. He said, but we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. He said, yeah, we've got troubles. Yes, we've got situations. He said, but we understand that it's about God and the power of God. It's not about us. 
And so when we go through those things, we recognize that God has always given us what we need, and God is always there to help us in times of trouble, and God is always there to deliver us if there's an issue that we really need to be taken out of, and God's there to help us to go through the things that we need to go through and give us what we need as we go through them. He has peace, and he has love, and he has joy. He has his grace, and he has his mercy. Amen. He will give us his strength as we go forward, and so we don't have to worry about what's happening around us. We just got to keep our attention on the glory of God and allow the power of God to flow through us and to reside in us as the Spirit of God leads us and guides us because the enemy can't kill you because if the enemy could kill you, he already would have done that. The devil's not that powerful. He has his limitations, and God is the one that sets the limitations. And so the Apostle Paul, in his own personal frustrations, back to our text in Acts chapter 18, amen, he was just so done with those Jews and so done with what was going on. And he said, I'm going out to the Gentiles. I'm going out to the Greeks that are out here. That's it. And he leaves Aquila and Priscilla's house. That's where he was staying at first. And he goes to the house of justice, the Bible tells us. And in justice's house... He, his house is hard against the synagogue. And the seeds that he'd been planting in the, in the days, that, in the weeks that he'd been there before, all of a sudden some of those seeds start coming up. Crispus all of a sudden realizes, you know what Paul told us a couple weeks ago? I think that's right. I think Jesus is the Christ. And so he believes. And then other people around hear about Crispus' faith. And he was a chief ruler of the synagogue. And the Bible said in verse 8 that we read earlier, he said many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. All of a sudden, individuals started realizing, hey, what Paul was telling us was right. And they began to get baptized in Jesus' name. God began to fill them with the Holy Ghost. They began to walk in a brand new life, in a brand new lifestyle. Amen. All Paul in his frustration had given up. And now all of a sudden, the seeds started coming. I want to encourage you today, don't give up, don't quit, don't stop, amen, because the seeds that have been planted, they're coming up, amen, God wants you to keep being faithful and keep going forward, amen, we might be pressed, but we're still marching on, we might feel felt constrained inside and not frustrated so much that we want to quit, but we still got to keep going, we got to keep walking toward the Lord, amen, it is not, my friend, a, a sprint, it's a marathon, God wants us to be faithful to the end, he wants us to keep going until he hears us say, we hear him say, Say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Things begin to change as a breakthrough begins. Many Jews believe, and God helps them. And then the Lord comes to Paul. And that's what I'm asking God to do to each of our lives individually. God, speak to us. Speak to us. He came to this tired, frustrated apostle, a man that had given his all, had done his best. By all indications, he was working a tent maker job because that's why he stayed with Aquila and Priscilla when he got there. And so he was paying his own way. He was a home missionary at best. And God comes. I'm asking God, God, come speak to us. You see that dad, you see that man right now that's struggling. I'm going to talk to him directly today, God. You see that mom that's been just holding on and don't know if she can go much longer. God, you speak to them today. I mean, you speak to that young person that doesn't understand why all this has happened and just feels the intense pressure and felt a little depressed lately and all these kind of things have been going on and feel the oppression of the day. Amen, my friend, it's normal. Unfortunately, it's, it's what happens when we walk with God. It's what's going on in our world today. You're not the only one. The people out there that aren't even walking with God are feeling that same pressure and that same depression out there. And so don't believe the lie of the devil that you've got to leave God and leave the church to feel better because there's no hope out there. So the Apostle Paul, even the Apostle Paul, in his frustrated state, Acts 18 and verse 9, then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. 
He said, be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. He said, Paul, you've been doing a good job. You've been doing the right thing. But you let your own personal frustration get in your way. Keep planting the seeds. Keep declaring the word of God. Because I see what's happening. And it's my kingdom. Verse 10. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in the city. For our musicians and singers will come back. God is calling us to continue to speak, to continue to be faithful, to go forth in faith and to walk in the power of his might. Because a breakthrough is coming. And it won't happen in your life if you quit. You've got to keep going forward. Yes, if you're tired, rest. If you're stressed out, reevaluate and, and get some things balanced in your life. Pastor's not saying that you should go seven days a week, 24 hours a day, because, my friend, that's breaking all the principles of God's word. I mean, we've got to take one day and rest every day. I mean, the weight of the world is not on your shoulders. This is God's kingdom. It's not your kingdom. And so you can just rest and relax. Say, today, God, I'm resting like you told me to because it's your kingdom and you're taking care of things. And I'm going to do something, amen, that just relaxes me so I can go forward. We need to do that. We don't need to get all tense and all tight and all worked up. That's how the enemy wants us to be. Remember, God's with you. That there's no person, no individual that really can hurt you. And there are many people in this area that God wants to reach with the gospel. He's going to use your vessel, your voice, your witness to help them. We stand together right now and just bow our heads. Lord, we're so thankful for your truth. We're so thankful for your word today. Help us, Lord Jesus, just to receive what you've given us today. God, we feel pressed. We feel the struggle. We feel the pressure. But God, we're ready to go forward in your strength. We can't do it by ourselves. God, lift up those weary hands right now. Minister the one that's been really been struggling lately. They've been contemplating what to do and how they should go forward. Draw them back to yourself, Lord. Strengthen them today. Touch them, we pray. Amen, Lord. Lift the depression, the oppression. Minister to them, we pray right now in Jesus' name. Let your power and your love move in their lives and their hearts. We ask in Jesus' precious name. We worship you today, God. You're not abandoned. You're not alone. The best days of the church are still ahead. So the Bible tells us to lift up our eyes and look unto the hills from whence cometh our help because our help cometh from the Lord. God's right here to help you. God's right here this morning to minister to you. God is right here today, amen, to give you an answer and to give you the strength, to fill you with His Spirit and to help you as you go forward. Amen, you're not alone. Amen, it's not hopeless. Amen, I know you might be frustrated, but keep going on. Keep pressing on. Amen, keep going forward. Amen, because when Paul was at his lowest point, God came and said, don't be afraid, Paul, speak. Don't get so frustrated, Paul. I'm with you. Amen. Don't be so frustrated, God, with, with things going on. God said, I, I've got my anointing upon you, and I'll help you. The Lord's here this morning to give you what you need. So I'm asking everybody if you find a place to pray for the next few minutes. If you'd like to come to the front, at the pew where you're at, wherever it might be. But God knows where you're at. He sees what's going on in your life. And they're going to sing. And we want you to touch the Lord for a little while today. And so just raise your hands and say, thank you, God. Amen. Just bow a knee before him and say, God, I really need you today. Amen. Whatever the situation might be in your life. Amen. Let God know that you're still in here and that you need his help. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Let's find a place to pray as they sing. Amen. Let's, let's talk to the Lord for a little while today. I might be pressed. 
but I'm still marching forward. In Jesus' name. Thank you.
Amen, amen. There is no retreat in God's kingdom. No armor for the back. God wants us to continue to go forward. It's a hard lesson to learn. Because anytime we turn around and go back, we always get ourselves in trouble. Amen. But God wants us to stand. If we've done all to stand, the Bible says to do what? Just stand. When you don't know what to do, follow the principles of the word. Go forward. Amen. We're so glad that you're here today. And today is a special day in the life of one young